up everybody, it's your boy my Mac and I'm back with another one. And this time, we're going to be doing an episode review of Black Clover, episode 119, The Final Attack, which is the climax of the elf invasion arc, and also the climax of the fight with the devil. So let's get into it. So I guess I can mention the fact that Rafeshi and Gelder are still alive, because Gelder's magic is OP as fuck, even against otherworldly magic, some type of way. So, yeah, that's all you're getting. Moving on. First thing we're going to talk about is Licht and Lumiere working together to protect everybody that's still stuck in this whole dimension and trying their best to get away from this otherworldly magic that will literally kill everybody. That's not for monster. So let's talk about that. Now this is something that's very important and also something that should really be like respected because of the fact that this is the recombination and a reunion of two guys who literally are the embodiment of brothers from another mother. Because these guys were going to be brothers, they were going to be brothers-in-law, with a family, they were going to combine the civilizations of the elves and the humans before this devil came in and completely ruined everything. And even before that, their friendship was so bright, you could still see them as treating themselves as families if Tetsu never even came into the equation. So, the fact that that tragedy fell before them, and the fact that they have this chance now to not only right the past, but also protect the future, by making sure that everybody in this whole castle thing is safe, that's amazing. And I love Black Clover for that fact. So, Lick uses his ability and the fact that he's connected to all the elves in such a deep spiritual way to be able to find all of them and then use the Demon Dweller Sword, which can also connect them to those elves as well, and submit Lumiere's magic, which is strong enough to combat the devil's magic and go straight to all the people and anybody who's by an elf will get a protecting light covering them. So that is really amazing. Next thing I want to talk about, let's talk about Yuno and Asta and how they're faring against the devil. So, as we all know, Yuno is doing pretty well, although, you know, it's still kind of a struggle. And he's holding his own against the devil. But Asta, on the other hand, is reaching his physical limit. Mainly for the fact that anti-magic puts a continuous strain on his body, especially when he's in his black form. And the fact that he's trying to condense all this anti-magic that was strong enough even to smack the first Wizard King into the wall and disable his magic for a few moments. Yeah, can't blame your boy for having to struggle just a little bit with trying to get it under control. So, while he's doing that, you know he's trying to figure out the best way to handle this devil, but he also sees Asta having struggles, so he does what he normally does and talk a little bit of schmack, you know what I'm saying? You talk that schmack, your homeboy gonna get riled up and he gonna get himself straight, which Asta does. And now, we see Yuno and Asta with swords. Yuno has the spirit sword of Zephyr, which is pretty much a condensed wind sword that kind of copies the magic of everybody's, or at least it condenses the free magic that was rolling around everywhere from everybody. And it looks pretty dope, I ain't gonna lie. You know what I'm saying? It looks kind of cool. I like the little star things that's right by this thing. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's nice, it's nice. But it ain't nothing compared to my boy Austin with that black divider, boy. Black power all day, you know what I'm saying? So, now Austin has a sword that is highly condensed in anti-magic, which gives him a longer reach from the shorter Demon Destroyer sword, and also probably has a whole lot more damaging power than before. So, the devil seeing this and getting a little bit worried by this and wanting to hurry and end this fight, he summons more monsters from the other world by having form come out of this big, goopy, what the hell is that stuff anyway? Whatever. So these monsters start coming forth and attacking Yuno and Asta. Asta and Yuno are doing their best to evade them and go through and be able to fight back. Although, as we mentioned, Asta is still tired, so he's reaching his limit closer and closer by the second. While Yuno is holding his own, but it is still a whole lot of monsters and the devil is still a whole lot of feet away from them. However, thanks to the good on-feet strategizing that they can do, Yuno is able to protrude Asta forth by sending him through a very strongly mind condensed wind tornado which boosts his speed and sends him straight at the devil which allows Asta to strike the devil in the heart. Or so we thought. So the devil has actually been able to move his body parts around and he moved his heart around so that way he can get hold of Asta and also drive him away while also having hold of Yuno. Now we need to talk about my captain, my captain. Captain Yami. 
So, thanks to Charlotte's magic, Yami's got his arm back, which we know is something that he really needed in this situation, because if not, he kind of would have been only trying to be a one-armed swordsman. And I mean, as cool as Guts is, we don't need that being imaged right now. So, Yami has his arm back, so he's trying to figure out the best way to get and attack the devil from such a far reach. So, he knows what he has to do. He has to get some good old Ryu and Kenshin and sheath his sword with Charlotte's magic, focus his attention as hard as he can, and strike the devil from a very far distance. And when I say far distance, it actually more than likely is pretty far because if you're thinking about it, the distance in this Shadow Palace thing, that probably from where Yami is, at the least, might be 500 yards, which is like five football fields away. Or let's just kind of say he might be an even mile away from the devil. So yeah, the fact that his magic could reach that far is kind of crazy. But he does it. So we see Yami go through with this high concentration that even impresses an elf like Sharla. He goes through, he hits his monozone, which gives him extra reach and also extra ability to reach the devil. And he sends that dimension slash going straight through everything until it reaches its target. And boy, was it crazy. Ooh, I enjoyed that so much. But the more touching thing is the fact that we have Yami flash back to a thought of Julius when he first gave him the position of captain, which Yami doubted. No wonder he's been getting insulted this whole time for being a foreigner. So he's also had a whole lot of heat thrown on Julius for that fact that he was brought into the Magic Knights anyway. So to get that flashback and to see that even back all those years ago, Julius had faith in him, really touching. And I really appreciated that as well. But let's move on to something that's just a little bit more touching, which is this final attack that comes from Yuno and Asta. So really, Yuno doesn't have shit to do with this moment. Yuno kind of only just separates them from the, de from the devil's hands after he gets hit by the dimension slash attack. Which then gives Asta the chance to go through and try to attack him. However, like we said, his body is giving in. He reached his limit. That's why Nero came through as that strong backbone and helped seal that pain away and told Asta, look, you said you was going to be the Wizard King, ain't it? You need to go do your job. And boy, I'm talking about feelings. I was in my emotions, dog. Because when you really think about it, Nero's been there from day one. She's been watching Asta ever since he got his grimoire. He's been going through, working hard, beating enemies he should have never even been able to even talk to. And yet, he did it and she's watched him move forward step by step of the way. And that's really touching. She's been there the whole time. And so when he gets encouragement from her, and we see that she not only just grew from somebody who wanted to utilize the fact that he had Lick's grimoire, but actually started to believe in him as well and respect him and honestly puts her faith and trust in him. <sighs> just, it's just beautiful, man. It's just beautiful. And Asta doesn't let down as always, boy, because he says, yes, ma'am, yes, ma'am. Charges forward, activates that demon divider. Ooh, he cuts through that motherfucker clean, boy. And I really enjoyed the entire thing. So as far as I had to say, I really do enjoy this whole art, this setup, the strategies involved, and everything that came into it as far as the emotions go. I mean, sure, the animation was kind of bad for a lot of the moments, but I still can't take away from the fact that the strategy used in a lot of these fights, the coordination that had to be done on hand and on foot, amazing, and also the emotional value put into this is just great. And now we have the conclusion of the elf arc. We also have the revenge set off from Nero, Lumiere, Licht, and all the elves that were betrayed finally being achieved. It's all thanks to our boy Asta. And, you know, and my captain, my captain, Captain Yami. So, if you have any thoughts on the review, the episode, or any other components into this entire arc, leave them in the comments section. Be sure to like and subscribe to the video. And also hit that notification button to see any other videos I do. Because I really want to get a deeper look into just how serious this battle was. Thank you for watching. It's your boy, my Mac. Catch you next time. Just take my hand.